This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Power on. Power on. It's time to take your place on the starting grid and get ready for Racer Radio. Your host, Dave Stahl, about to take you for a white knuckle lap around the motorsports industry, covering everything from top notch national drivers and crew chiefs right down to your local kid racers and racetracks. Watch for the apex because here comes Racer Radio with Dave Stahl. All right, folks, welcome. This is Racer Radio. I'm Dave. I'm Brittany. And this is FM 961, AM 1170. The answer. Well, 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 Ms. Brittany. Yes, sir. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing wonderful with 100 degree weather outside. Thank yeah. you very much. I finally went in the pool yesterday. You have a swimming hole? I do. How nice? In the ground? In the ground. It's not my favorite activity. It's a little sedentary for me, yeah. but I don't have AC. And yesterday was a hot one. Well, you could put a race seat in the bottom of the pool. We actually tried to put lawn, a lawn chair in there. And you floated and flipped over. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, a little I, much. Yeah, I, don't I don't know why I knew that was going to... Well, we wanted to well, watch... you don't weigh anything. See, that's the problem. Well, okay, and there's buoyancy and well, yeah, there, maybe yeah, there's a little too much of the you're fat. You're very buoyant, I'm buoyant. Say, yeah. <laughs> So who'd you bring in as a guest today? The gentleman to my left used to tear it up on two wheels. Mm-hmm. We, we talk four wheels a lot. Right. So we have somebody representing two wheels. And now I believe he finds himself more often behind a camera shooting towards the direction of those with two, maybe three, and four wheels. Well, he was oh, nice he's nodding to bring yes. us in a sample of I his I know, work he gave us vi- framed artwork yeah, with my name on it. Yeah, I see I your know. name too, Dave. Yeah, but uh, please nice. uh, welcome Judd Neves. Afternoon, folks. Hi. How you doing, Judd? I'm doing real good. So let's answer the question that Brittany asked off air, <laughs> and that was why did you get off of the iron horse and get behind the camera? <laughs> Straight to the point. 20 years uh, racing straight from 1985 to 2005. And uh, let's see, uh, two collarbones, ribs, mm. knees, elbow, wrist. Um, Isn't and, it easier to say the parts and pieces you right, haven't you didn't. broken? <laughs> yeah. My pinky toe. Yeah. That's it. Oh. But after a while, you break enough. It's like, okay, mm. I love the sport. Let's see if we can go another direction. Yeah, you're still involved. <laughs> but you did. Did you do fo- photography while you raced through all those years? No, not at all. I've never even picked up a camera. Wow. Okay. And I just, it, you know, the knees finally gave out. Mm. So I just, I it was, I was in pain so bad after yeah. the races, I couldn't. You know, it it wasn't work. worth it anymore. It wasn't worth it anymore. Yeah. And to stay involved, I picked up a camera, yeah. and I just. Seemed to be a natural at it and kept going. Yeah. And I've been doing that since 2005. Okay. So you've been, sh- and you'll shoot, you shoot mainly dirt. I shoot events? all dirt. Nothing it but dirt. It says nothing but dirt racing photography. I like that. <laughs> uh, for somebody out there that might be listening for the first time, or maybe they've, they, they've always had a hankering maybe to, to get into photography. Of course, today you don't have to know anything about F stop and all oh, whatever that's that point and shoot. Point <laughs> what would be probably the best advice to give maybe a young gentleman or a young lady that would like to get into your sport? Wow. Um, it is, it's all about following the uh, action. Yeah. You know, uh, getting a good camera is always a plus. Mm-hmm. Mine does 10 frames a second. So I can. Really- right. It's action sport. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you, and then you, out of all, say out of a thousand shots, how many do you actually use? Uh, probably 100, yeah. 200 at most. And that's pretty good. That's pretty I mean, good. That's because you're a good shooter. <laughs> I don't want to miss a thing. Well, no, 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 no. So <laughs> I know that you have notes, so I don't want you to go off the top without having notes. Yeah. What do you got? Well, I was just uh, wrote down the uh, years that I had uh, championships as a sportsman racer. Ah, what years? Um, see, 1990 and 96, I was uh, in the vet class championship. They, they had two classes. You could drive pro uh expert or you could ride sportsman am okay so i chose the sportsman am class and uh did pretty good what'd you ride oh i was always on big bore uh 500 two stroke motorcycle if two you're stroke, gonna two fall stroke. off you yeah, might right. as well do it in style that's right, right? nice and fast <laughs> Zing. what kind of bikes uh ktm honda kawasaki yeah. oh yeah well, you, you, you dealt with the all best. of them <laughs> oh the honda was a rocket ship i was gonna say out of all of them i would say the rock the honda would probably be the 
the the fastest and the oh, most nimble. Oh yeah, uh, no electric start. Nobody had that back no. then. Oh so yeah, I still don't. You don't? No, my little KX100. Your dwarf car has to be oh, kick started. The, the motorcycle. Oh, We're talking two oh, wheels. I see, my I see. little KX100. So how far and where did you mainly ride? Did you have a certain area that you um, would run? Well, I started in Duros, but mainly District 38 down in Pearl Valley. Right. And well, you uh, live out there in El Centro, I live out right? there. Yeah. So it was nice. I was a teacher, and I used to get all that time off, so I yeah. could, we could pre-run back then. Uh, so I was constantly out there pre-running, pre-running, so you eliminate a lot of the dangers, even though you know you still fall down occasionally. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's just, I, I did the Nora race. I, I announced, the, if you ever get a chance as a vet, that's, that's the race, because it's not a race race. It's a rally. It's kind of an, a rally, but, but I'll never forget we were at the last checkpoint and this guy had, was flying on his dirt bike, got hit by a pedestrian. No. They helped him back on the bike and he comes in and one leg's out and it's wobbling and I see him coming. I just yell, medic, <laughs> medic. I mean, he was hurt really bad, but there was no way he was not going to finish that race. Oh. And he crawled up on his bike. Very was, nice. Yeah, Very really nice. Well, my dad always said, I always hear him say, if there's a group of people, there's a crowd of people standing around, be aware, you yeah. know, beware of something. Yeah. Or a photographer. Or a photographer. Or a photographer. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brace and, for it. Yeah. And that's, and that's that too. And so, so where do your uh, uh, photos end up? Where Do you publicize them? Are they uh, yes, I do on Facebook, uh, Judd Neves or uh, Nothing But Dirt Racing Photography, both uh, different pages. Have you ever Probably. seen S and S, the magazine? Yeah. <laughs> with, uh, I cover all their races, and I send all my pictures into them. Okay, with Sherry and yeah, yeah fantastic. Steve. Yeah, Steve and Sherry. On his Facebook page, you can see all, a ton yeah. of photographs and reference to the S and S, the off road. And I actually saw that you did you say you don't mind people sharing the photos as long as you give them credit. All of my give yourself photos credit. are shareable. I yeah. turn in uh, logo free. Photos so people can share them as they want. So you know, you're I, not trying to make a living doing this? No, yeah. not at all. I'm doing this for the love of the sport. Yeah. And I go to all these races on my own I time. Guess, yeah. Wow. And you get into tracks and races with, uh, with the with the Photog press pass, which means you can go yeah. anywhere and everywhere. Yes, sir. You're not stuck in the stands. Nope. I get the best seat in the house. So That's win-win. We, yeah, well, it could be a little hairy sitting up close. I know, but he catches. You got to go on us, all of you yeah, listeners. But you could Dave, end up catching a bike. A true. Well, what a close up. Yeah. But you know, he catches those action shots, yeah. and as a racer, it's fun if someone can catch it. Yeah. You know, you try to capture that image in your head, or you try to describe it to your friends and family. Yeah. But if someone catches that, like Judd, then it remains with you for a long, long so time. So give me a hair raising experience. <laughs> I'm sure you had one or two. Oh, um, I had a bike chase me down, oh. and he, he came over a jump, and he lost it after. Um, and it liked you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he there went an off, attraction. and that bike came straight for me. The bike went, I was behind a great big bush, eight foot, probably tall. You know, they couldn't really see me, but I figured, well, if they can't see me, they won't hit me. Oh, or he came so off that, you thought. Yeah, he came off that bike, and the bike kept going. Wow. The bike went right through the bush. I had to jump. At the last second, just missed me by six inches or so. But you got the shot. Yeah, did but you get the in, shot? You know, I'm, I'm, oh yeah, I got all the shots. <laughs> but I'm still looking through the lens. That's what. And, I this, and this bike is coming towards me. I'm just going. Whoa! Whoa this, this is gonna be. You know, I put the camera down just in time to jump. Wow. And okay, you remember that asphalt De Hommel? I can't think of his first name. The the father, De Hommel's his last name. He was world class super bike rider. Very stern, didn't smile, and I'm interviewing him at at, at uh, Auto Club Speedway, and you know I'm thinking, God, this guy is just as tight as a drum. You know, I got to figure out a way to loosen him up. So I said, By the way, I go, uh, Have you ever found a device that's on a motorcycle that when you go down, the bike will hunt you down and try to run over you? Oh my gosh! And he started laughing. He says, I have been looking for 20 years and I have yet to find that piece on the bike that will hunt me down and try to run over me because that's what motorcycles do. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? They will hunt you down. Three-wheelers and quads are probably so, more famous for Yeah, that. I've had a quad land on me. I was like, what, when did that happen? Why did that happen? You were next to me. Now you're on top of me. Oh, no, no. When I was on my two-wheel. I got quad three-wheeler stories, too. 
I had one do a, a wrestler, you know, over your shoulder and slam you on the ground. Jeez. Oh, knock all the wind out of you. I go, what did you do that for? <laughs> I wasn't doing anything. I we were friends. You. Heck, I couldn't even talk. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that's not a good thing. All right, let's take a quick break. All right, we're going to go back to our special guest, Judd Nevis. He's a photographer, uh, one-time rider slash champion. Uh, got tired of falling off the bike, uh, not, not because of his own doing, but because motorcycles like to do that. Yes, they do. Kind of like riding a bull, you know, the bulls don't like you on their back. That's how I got into racing. The guys who offered me his car, his doctor said, if you break one more bone, I'm not going to be able to put you back together. So he retired really? and then got tired of just looking at his cars and decided he wanted his car back on the track. And then I was approached. So there is that yeah, time but, when you come to that decision. I don't look forward to it personally, but I guess. Well, I think your longevity in a car is much longer. And I was thinking about that. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to say that when you said you hurt both your knees. I thought, well, why didn't he get in a car? I just, a cage wasn't for me. <laughs> okay. So I just, yeah, you know, my orthopedic surgeon was a really great doctor. And it wasn't, you know, he was, I'll get you back out there as quick as I can. That's the best kind of doctor to well, have. Well, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Instead of giving you the lecture, yeah. which my dad says he get he got the lecture year after you know, like every wrist that he broke or ribs, set of ribs. Well, <laughs> that's all... a whole another story. But it was the doctors always gave him a lecture, so he started saying things like, "I broke it fishing." Or falling off oh. a ladder. Or- well, I, that's a badge of honor. I'll tell you how I broke it. You know, I'm not going to hide it. <laughs> no, he it. said that the doctors didn't like it. Oh, well, the doctors didn't. Well, and the thing of it is, motorcycling is way cheaper than a car. Yes, it is. You know, not only, I mean, you can throw that's your a strong argument. in the back of a pickup. <laughs> you can throw your gear bag in there, any spare parts. Your they don't stand. take up that much space. No. Yeah. And there's not... A lot of maintenance compared to a car. There's, there's still quite a bit of maintenance. Well, if you if you do your homework, then you don't break down. Well, well, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Did you ever do any rally racing where you went long distance? Um, well, most of the Superstition Series was long distance, anywhere from 150 oh, to geez. 300 miles. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, that was challenging. Normally you had a partner, but uh, you're still racing anywhere from 100 miles to 150 or more. Right. Is yeah. it a couple loops or is it yeah, one huge loops. loop? Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. at least you're going around the same area. So it's not like, you know, like Dakar where you're gone. But it would get <laughs> torn up and the silty monster would sometimes attack you. Oh, and yeah. I went down one yes. time and the silt was so bad. The only thing I could see was my handlebars sticking up out of the dust. <laughs> no kidding. Of course, and then one or two guys ran over my bike well, and then I had to hey. dig it out and Try to get it to run again. And try to get like, to sorry, as yes, they're going by. So we decided to go into photography. Now, did you start with a camera and film, or did you go right? right 05. To Where digital? were they in 05? Oh, I, could, I don't know how the photographers ever did film. I, I've been all digital, and I started with a real cheap camera, but it was digital. Oh, okay. And you can you know, put back in the computer and adjust it a little bit if you have to. Yeah. But, uh, the digital age, I mean, I'll go out and I'll shoot seven to eight thousand pictures over a weekend uh-huh. and then of course the bad thing editing and going through them yeah oh, that yeah. takes time but at least you don't have to develop them all oh, the yeah. good or bad my well, mom was a photographer as well and imagine developing hundreds of yeah hundreds. see i started shooting in the army where they would let us develop and our, all our own photos where, you know, you had the pan. Oh, yeah. Would... I was in the dark room with my mom yeah. moving that little pan around. And yeah. <laughs> I could never figure out F-stop and all those other. I just, it just would. So I just put it on automatic. And I got what I consider some really, 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 really good shots. Because I just was, I have a good eye for photography. I've always, I've always been told that. I mean, my wife raises dogs. Roddies and Dachshunds, and she loves it when I shoot any of her Roddies and Dachshunds because I've just got a great eye. Plus, I know to shoot 10, and right. hopefully I'll get <laughs> one get or two, one. you know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. you're dealing with a freaking dog. He's not going to stand yeah. there and smile. Yeah. He's going to be like, doing all this yeah. crazy stuff. So... I would imagine, though, that now having the internet, it's easier to share, or Facebook and all that. Once you have these great shots because i've seen yours dave on facebook mm-hmm. of the cute dogs um 
do you like that you can share them now so much easier? Like in 05, how did you share them when you had that great shot? Um, well, you went into publications. Well, yeah, I, uh, SNS off road magazine published all my stuff, but I didn't start with them till six years ago. Um, I actually didn't start going to Facebook till like 2009. And then I was progressively coming on and, but I had all these back files, all these archives, mm -hmm. and I like to put those out on occasion. Oh, yeah. yeah, I saw and, when you did one like 20 years before and the, now later. <laughs> and some of the people see those and they go, wow, that's great. You know, you had a yeah. picture of me back in 2005. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I was still standing straight up. How yeah. cool is that? Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it, and, that, and I think photography is just like art. You know? It is art. Yeah. And, and truly, I mean... I myself, and I'm not saying anything to anybody else, but I'm not into Photoshop. Probably because I don't know how to do Photoshop. <laughs> That's honest. So that makes me a different type of photographer because I don't go in and change anything. I figure I either get the shot or I don't get the shot. So, but I I look at, okay, I'm going to tell you a quick story because we've got all the way to the top of the hour. So I worked for a company. I sold engine analyzers and alignment gear and all that kind of stuff. And it was probably one of the most stressful jobs I ever had because they told me I was going to make all this money and I didn't make all the money. And I had a gentleman, and you could probably be his brother. I mean, always smiling and just a happy-go-lucky guy. And one day I come in, and I'm just <laughs> stressing to the bones. And he says, he says, tomorrow when you come to work, bring your camera. I said, I'm not bringing my camera. I don't have time. I have to sell some equipment. I got a house payment coming up at the end of the month. <laughs> Just do like I said and bring your camera. So I brought my camera in. We drive to the beach. And I'm, I, I, I got to get on the road. I mean, I don't. I just get out of the car. And we walked along the beach. He said, start taking pictures. Of what? I don't care. <laughs> just start taking pictures. So I'm shooting. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going, oh, okay. And I'm setting it up. And I'm saying, 20 minutes in, I was totally relaxed. Mm -hmm. I was totally calm. And he says, how do you feel? I says, man, I, this is, I, I don't know why I haven't done it. Start keeping your camera in your truck. Mm -hmm. And when things aren't going the way you want it to go, drag out the camera. I was shooting seagulls, for God's <laughs> sakes, you know? But cameras can be the most relaxing form of art that, that I know of. I mean, would that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Even even off road photography. Oh, it, it, you can you catch them in the best and the worst moments all at the same time. Right. But it's a challenge when mm -hmm. they're going 60, 70, 100 miles an hour in front of you, beside you, and by. Right. To follow them and get a good clear shot right. is very challenging. And don't you love it when you get the right shot? Oh yes. It's just like winning an award. You well, know. Well, you know you get to. It, it's strange when a, when a racer crashes. You know he's in pain. He's hating life. Inevitably, the next day I get a call. Did you, Did get, you that get that shot? Did you get the rat? <laughs> yeah. Every time. Well, of course, because I figure if I'm going to be hurting, I better have got a good well, shot. Well, and a this. picture's worth a thousand words. You go well, back to work on Monday morning, walking like a stepped-on cockroach. Ah, but you know, you know, sore but not sorry, and and you want to relive it or describe it to the people, and that picture. Says it describes all. Yeah. it for you. Well, yeah, and as for you sure. get older and you retire and you don't ride anymore, oh, the now memories. all of a sudden that becomes something you can look at every day. This my very dear friend, Ron Radigan. He's in the, the Cal VMX, like I was mentioning, and his office is chuck full of motorcycle photos. I don't know who's been shooting them, but they're really great action shots. And now he's on a dual sport, and he's got some dual sport shots and all on dirt, and he's just loving life. And it was so funny because the dealership he works at, somebody came in and said, all right, no more pictures on the walls. I want white walls. What? I don't want anything on the wall. So he would start adding one here and one <laughs> there and one here. One I love one. it. Next thing you know, you walk into his office, and it's just That's awesome. Photos. <laughs> but there's something about photography for one, it captures a time in your life that you can't relive. Yes. Right? Yeah, oh, yes. And you never throw photos away. I don't care what kind of photos they are. Yeah. And for you to be able to fall back and, you know, the only thing is you need to learn to organize and put dates on That's them. That's true. And tell a little story on them, something else why you will never remember. Yeah. Yeah. It is nice, the memories. So, so if you just and get you don't that have right. enough photos of your rig. I don't. 
I don't think. Do you uh, have a lot of photos of your car? You mean your baby pictures? When <laughs> people start <laughs> showing baby pictures? No. My baby pictures of my dwarf car. But I mean, really, do you um, have a lot of photos of the crew and the... Um, I would have, say my mom does a have, really good job of documenting. Have, you need to have Judd come in sometime. Oh, you, yeah. oh, yeah, wow. Just shoot, shoot, shoot you, just oh, shoot your one evening. I, I just, I'm one of those that feels silly just standing there no, next no, to no. my car. We're talking action shot that you don't even know he's, by the way, she gets distracted quite easily. Full moons. Squirrel. Ah. So she doesn't want to be driving around and all of a no, you're over there. Yeah. You know, to give it the old side shot with a quick grit. No, I'm talking about yeah. shots that you never. Yeah, that would be cool because my mom actually videos, which is nice to. Uh... But I like videos are great, but I like it's like what he just oh, gave yeah. us today. Something you could put a frame in, hang it on the wall. With the wheels crossed up. Yeah. Mm-mm. And they, and maybe, you, well, you're wearing a full face helmet, so you can't really see it. But just My name's across the, the front. The car's all out of control and it's just before you roll it. And, I what? mean, those are the kind oh of shots. Oh my gosh, where'd the story just. I'm making Where'd up a story great story or getting up on two wheels. Okay, two wheels. Or, I've been there. Have you been on two wheels? I've been off of all wheels. I, How do you yes, get off crossing, on? Yes, crossing, you, because it's open wheel, and you hit another oh, wheel or yeah. the wall. I had that crossing the finish line, and Dirt Dude called me the next day. He's like, I can't believe you landed that. I was like, that makes two of us. You don't have Nerf bars on that? We have Nerf bars, but no. Somebody went up and the over wheels the Nerf bar. go, yeah. You can hit somebody else's wheel or the wall easily in the dwarf car. Yeah. I'm the guy that holds the shutter down and gets it 10 pictures Action in a row. Shot, yeah. 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 Click, 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 click. It, I saw that. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, and hey. then a big dust ball. Yep. Yes. Uh, listeners, you got to go to his Facebook page, Nothing But Dirt Race. Wait, Nothing But Dirt Racer Photography. Yeah, there's on the photo page or click on photos, there's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of pictures that I've taken over the past 15, 20 years. And if you know somebody in one of these photos, Feel free to copy it. Sure. Yeah. It's all shareable. Yeah, you there's know. funny conversations, too, in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to remember, he's been doing this yeah. for a couple of weeks. Have now. you shot at Paris since this is the yes, Paris I've segment? Yes, i Paris. And they, Verona. do they do flat track? Do you shoot flat track as well? Well, let's uh, find out when we come back, because we got to take a break. Us. Yes, we do. Because you're not looking at the clock. No, I'm not. No, your computer screen's off Uh, today. Well, it's just been (laughs) one of those days. It's 2020, folks. All right, folks, welcome back. You're listening to FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. You are failing again. I I was muting. Yeah. You were muting? Well, his phone (laughs) started giving directions, and he's just sitting here. Well, that's what phones do, (laughs) right? On. (laughs) Shows you how technically inclined our guest is. And who is our guest? Judd Neves, a photographer. And the name of his... Former racer. Looks on the picture. Well, I I don't know if it's racer or race photographer. Photography, that's what I was looking for. I'm a racer turned photographer. No, the name of your photographer. Oh, nothing but dirt. Racing photography. Racing photography. Right. That was the Nothing thing. I don't know if it was racer racing. or race. People. Get us a special guest in the house, uh, Judd Nevis. He is a photographer, mainly dirt. He's got a great lineup on Facebook. Uh, you can take a look. And if you happen to see an aunt or uncle or you know brother-in-law, and you say, oh, wow, look at that. You can happily uh, download it and blow it up and hang it on the wall. And I shoot everybody, too. I from. So you're, just not, start. you're not picky? I'm not picky. Yeah. Well, so you had a, a lady. She's now in the Nitrous Circus. Uh, you, you, you've you introduced me to a couple of racers an, as an well. HRA. There's a Michael Lewis that I didn't know until I saw your Facebook page. And then... Michael's a great guy. Yeah. that's And he tells like little stories. Like once I saw your photos, I was like, well, who's Michael Lewis? And then I wanted to, to look into that a little deeper. So, oh, so you actually put dialogue with your photos? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Not all the times, but I, I'll tell a little story and uh, just a brief, mm-hmm. whether they're finished or, you know, the uh, event itself, date, that kind of thing. And so, Vicki Golden, too, was another yeah. one. I just found that. That's so a, I'm like, who's Vicki Golden? And that's I was a like, great name for a race. And that was an awesome name. Yeah. So She's a fantastic yeah, she looks. Um, yeah, I sure grew up in the '80s. She's rad. Yeah. I have to oh, use yeah. that word. Yes, oh, I'm like, oh, she's rad. She's that's no fear. Does she still ride? I uh, she was doing X Games for a while and uh, broke her heel real bad, 
And I know that uh, she had a, it took a time to get her back onto the bike, but I think she's back on, but. She's I been practicing because yeah, I was practicing. stalking her. I mean, uh, looking her up on Are Facebook. You get her on? I don't know. She might be like a Sheldon Creed, hard to get a hold of because she's going up and up. <laughs> uh, well, you know, and I love women that race. I really do. I mean, they don't get the, the just they deserve, I don't think. I love promoting them. When I, I see too. them out there, I, I'll put more pictures out on them. And by I the can. way, anytime you have somebody that you think deserves the love, hook up uh, with Brittany and we'll be more than happy to put them on air. Cool. And, yeah, and, I, I can probably send you several people. Yeah. Sure. Well, and, 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 and like I said, deserving people yeah. that you think that maybe they're trying to make it in this industry. Cause up you and know, coming. Yeah, they there's a help. lot of kids trying to make it in this industry. It's a tough one. And a lot of them have massive talent and no money. And unfortunately money talks and you know what walks. Yes, it does. And that's the sad thing. I don't, I've never liked, that's what I've always felt, you know, grassroots racing should not be money generated. It should be talent. And I think corporations and factories need to support the grassroots racer, if not more than they would somebody that's in the big leagues. Yes. And it's, it's, and it's tough when you first start out to get all the equipment, get everything going, get it set up and you're covering all this on your own dime. And it uh, takes quite a bit and, and then if mom and dad are providing the, all of these support, that gets tough too occasionally for them. And they can only spend just so much. You know a kid by the name of Chris Noons? Oh, uh, I, I know that name, name. yeah. The California Kid is when his little logo. Everything he's touched, you know, motocross, wins championships, wins championships. But to, he's trying to break into the big time, and it's virtually impossible. Virtually impossible. Cause it's so, And he's good. Every, every division, everything he gets into, it, whether it be dirt bikes or karting, he wins championships, but he wants to move up the ladder. He's a good looking kid. He's got the curly hair, you know, he's like a surfer dude. He's a little too tall. He's about six foot, I think. And that's, you know, really that gets a little bit tall. I mean, tall people have a hard time in motorsports. Uh, some of the bike racers, some of the best ones are tall, but when they go into the turns and they're in a deep groove or something, they Ooh. got their knee up to their Ears. shoulder. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, they're eating their kneecap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, you've been doing this for quite a few years. Have you ever branched out to anything else other than dirt, or you just really love dirt? I love dirt. It's Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to race, mm-hmm. and it's it stuck with me all these years, and dirt's the only thing I like doing. So you teach when you're not – are you still teaching? No, I retired uh, in 2015. What would you teach? Culinary arts, uh, voc- uh, excuse me, voc ed. So you can cook. I can cook. <laughs> you didn't bring us anything to eat? We, uh, there was a student-run restaurant in Apriro, California, and uh, no. we had our own kitchen, and three days a week we cooked, two days a week in the classroom. But they, we had a charbroiler. We did Ooh. everything from tri-tip steak sandwiches to meatballs to uh, wow. stir fries, Italian cuisine, Mexican cuisine. We did it all. It was a lot of fun. I think that would be, oh, I love to cook. I absolutely love it. My wife doesn't cook a lick. She can't even boil water. But I love to cook. I mean, I, I watch nothing but motorsports, American Pickers, <laughs> car shows, and the Food Channel. Food Network? Yeah, I started cooking uh, with a broken collarbone. My first day teaching uh, was, I came in with oh, a. Oh, did you a, race the a, weekend a sling, before? A little sling. <laughs> yeah. They looked at me and went, what happened to you? Uh, oh, well, you know, I was cutting my lawn and <laughs> slipped on a, you know, on a sprinkler. <laughs> I actually, my first day of teaching, had to teach without a voice. I'd lost my voice back when I was on stage a bunch. And oh, I had you're a been, singer. I was keyboardist and singing back up and just talking really loud during the Which you know, breaks. Does, and uh, I had to teach my first day without a voice, but it lent itself to a very quiet classroom that year. Well, yeah, because they couldn't hear you. <laughs> no, like, yeah, they had to be super quiet to hear. But that's funny. Broken collarbone for you. Oh, okay, yeah. teachers, watch out when you first start teaching. So you don't have any specialty in cooking. You breaks, you like to cook all, everything. Uh, Yes, and uh, garnishing. I'm real good at that. You know, if it looks good, people, you know, the mind says oh, yeah, it looks, yeah, you know, it tastes good. You, you eat love? with your eyes. I once read that. Oh yeah, I love <laughs> it when somebody will pick up my my wife. She'll pick up a menu and she'll read. Oh, that sounds really good. I go, how could that sound really good? You can't even see it. 
But That's what your also, imagination's she's for, a Dave. Neck too. You know, she'll watch the waitress walk by. Oh yeah, what's that? Like, what is that? What is that? But no, <laughs> I, I. But see, I'm a total kind of a whack job when it comes to cooking because I will go. Like I've always wanted a deep fryer, and she won't let me have a deep fryer because she says it's not healthy. So I figured out how to make crunchy chicken by egg wash flour, and then at the end roll it in either Doritos or ah, potato yeah. chips. Yeah. Then just a little butter on it, and then put it in the oven. That way, it comes out nice and crunchy. It's only good the one time; it's not good the next Re-heating, day. Reheating, no. yeah. yeah. Did you have a go-to food that you ate on race day? Like she does bacon. Bacon for me, cheese. It's well, the carbs <laughs> loaded up on the carbs the day before. Yeah. Um, no, nothing really like specific. No egg sandwich in your top. <laughs> That's my dad. He always had an egg sandwich in the top pocket of his enduro jacket. What if it? Yeah. Spoiled. Oh. We- <laughs> beef jerky is what I carry to the race. Oh, beef you jerky? take beef okay. jerky? Okay. Yeah. She's going to write a book on what we eat at the race. Well, track. yeah, I got a lot of uh, stories. I, I will. We'll, we'll stick to Judd yeah, today. we'll stick to Judd <laughs> today. But uh, so any particular races that you like to cover, say, more than others? Yeah, that's what I was wondering, too. Well, I cover District 38 Desert, and I cover uh, Cal uh, VMX also. I think Cal VMX would be cool. Oh, it's... Um, See some beautiful bikes out there. Oh, yes. Is this the vintage? vintage. The vintage, right? I know, but right? they're, beautiful. Okay. they're yeah. more beautiful oh, today oh. than they were back when they were new. Oh, yes. They're they're twice as good. And these guys are super proud of their bikes. Yeah. Yes, they are. <laughs> I mean, you won't find a speck of dirt on them. No. No. And that's before and after the race. Yep. See, I'm an Elsinore guy. I like the Honda Elsinores. Yeah. I've always loved That's a good-looking bike. The desert racing, it's, it's to see guys going that fast across the desert floor and there's no pre-running now, uh-uh. none. Why is so, that? Do we know? And why is insurance, that? Insurance, AMA. Uh, uh, of course. AMA won't let them do it. Um, Fudd, who promoted the race oh, back I when I was that racing. that name, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Otis, Fudd, Fudd, Pucker. Yeah, um, yeah. We got to pre-run because of he didn't have the AMA. and it, But it saved a lot of injuries, especially uh, for me, yeah. even though I still fell down. Sure. Um, but at least you knew where you were falling. Yeah. It's sort of kind of. You, you try to pick that soft spot, but, you know, inevitably, uh, no, there's a couple of good rocks in there. Yeah. Something happens. But the, the speeds they attain for not having run the race course and as smooth as some of them are, right. you know, I like to get in some rough sections and start sh- I shoot those. I mean, the ground uh, roots. So you racing. know where to look. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's all about timing. Right. So I know where to look. Being a racer really helps. I bet. Uh, so I could I know where the spots are. I know what they're going to do, and it's when they do it you start you know, snapping that. Yeah, uh, especially when you see one of them get all wiggly. You go, oh, this is oh, a good yeah. spot to be. Yeah, out. they're in trouble. I stick right with them. Yeah, I'll just stay right here, and and and, and I'm sure with all the years you've been doing it, the repu- your reputation precedes you to where when they see you there, and if they do go down, <laughs> they know where to find you <laughs> to get that photo because hoping you got it. Yes, they. I will always get that too. Did you get that shot? Oh, sure, sure. You ever, ever have one you missed and you are angry that you didn't get? Oh, yes. I'm sure. I mean, very few. I was shooting a, a race and Rosler was leading. Well, he kept hitting this one jump sky high in the air, and I missed it two laps in a row. The last lap was coming, and so I said, this is my one chance to get him. And you got it. And I got it. Yeah. And when you say got him, I, I totally understand. He's probably up in the air, totally crossed up. Oh, yeah. He was way up dirt floor. All right, folks. Well, that was a great show. Hopefully you enjoyed Rachel Radio. Thanks to Brittany for bringing our guest in. My pleasure. We'll be on next week. Who knows what she'll have dug up. I know what we have. Well, let's, do you want to tell me? Sure. Becky McBride. I know Becky very well. She's done everything. She's the the best. All right. We're going to have to hit the road, but don't go anywhere. Gun Owner Radio coming up next. On FM 96.1, AM 1170. The Answer. This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl.